Hey everyone, and welcome to What Did I Miss? Where today I'll be breaking down the epic finale of the series Star Trek Picard, titled The Last Generation. The episode begins with a warning from Federation President Anton Chekhov, warning ships to stay away from Earth because of the Borg attack. This character is the son of Pavel Chekhov, who was played by Walter Koenig on the original series as well as in seven films. Mr. Koenig also returned to voice this character, who is not only named after a famous writer, but his first name is a homage to Anton Yelchin, the actor who played Chekhov in the J.J. Abrams films, who died tragically in 2016. This warning is also reminiscent of the warning made by the Federation president in the film The Voyage Home, after Earth was thought to have been under attack by an alien probe that was crippling the planet. During the warning, President Chekhov states, There are always possibilities. This is a quote that is attributed to Spock and was often quoted by his close friends. There are always possibilities, Spock said. The crew determined that the Borg signal is coming from Jupiter, and Picard gets another chance to say his infamous catchphrase, Engage! When they arrive, they find that the Borg are hiding inside the gases of Jupiter, specifically in what is known as the Eye of Jupiter, which is actually a persistent high-pressure storm that looks like a red spot or eye, much like the red eyes that assimilated Borg are known to have, including Jack. The crew decide that they have to stop the signal that is emitting from the Borg cube at all costs, and Picard says, What began over 35 years ago ends tonight. He is probably referring to the first meeting that the crew had with the Borg, which occurred in the Next Generation episode Q-Who, in which Q threw the Enterprise-D thousands of light years into uncharted space to meet the Borg for the very first time. This is why it is kind of fitting that Q appears in the end credit scene of this episode, since he is responsible for the conflict between the Borg and the Federation. The Borg cube that is hiding in the planet's gases is heavily damaged and looks to have been altered. I wonder if this Borg cube is the same one that was thought to have been destroyed after the battle for Earth in the first act of the film Star Trek First Contact. The fact that the Borg Queen in this episode is voiced by Alice Krieg, who also played the character in that film, would seem to lend some credence to that theory. On the Titan, Seven and Rafi are trying to save whoever they can, and one of the people with Seven reveals that they are just a cook. With the invention of food replicators, which were first shown on Starfleet ships during the next generation, having a cook on a starship doesn't make a lot of sense, unless this is a reference to the film Under Siege, in which a US battleship was taken by traitors, and they were defeated by a lowly cook played by none other than Steven Seagal. Are you like some special forces guy or something? I'm just a cook. On the Enterprise D, the crew decide to find the source of the signal and destroy it, while also trying to save Jack in the process. When the computer says, Electropathic pattern located. This is the unmistakable voice of Major Barrett Roddenberry, who was the voice of every Starfleet vessel up until the USS Discovery. Sadly, she passed away in 2008, and the line said by the computer in this episode of Picard is taken from the Next Generation episode titled Violations. Before being the voice of the computer, Miss Barrett Roddenberry first played the character number one on the pilot episode of Star Trek titled The Cage. Although her character was not given a name at the time, Picard referring to Riker as number one on The Next Generation is actually an homage to her character. Miss Barrett Roddenberry also played the character Nurse Chapel on the original series, and Deanna's mother Luxana Troy on The Next Generation as well as Deep Space Nine. The crew splits up and LaForge is given command of the Enterprise. I think that this is the first time we have seen Geordi in the big chair on the Enterprise-D since the first season Next Generation episode, The Arsenal of Freedom, in which LaForge was captain of the Enterprise-D while Picard and other members of the crew were captured on a planet below. Picard, Riker, and Worf beam onto the scariest Borg cube ever, looking for Jack. One interesting detail of design on the Borg ship is that I noticed that on the ceiling, you can see these things that look like five lights. Ah! Oh! Four lights! Okay, four lights surrounding another fixture, but these are actually Borg distribution nodes, and in the TNG episode The Best of Both Worlds, the away team destroyed a bunch of these in order to slow down the Borg ship. R.I.P. Fleet Admiral Shelby. Picard finds Jack, who at this point has almost been completely assimilated by the Borg. Behind Jack is what remains of the Borg Queen, who is played by a stunt double, but voiced by Alice Krieg. It is unclear how many Borg Queens there are in canon, but in reality, three different actresses have played the Borg Queen, including Miss Krieg, who played the part first in the film First Contact, and then again in the finale of the series Voyager. Also on Voyager, frequent Star Trek contributor Suzanne Thompson played the Queen in three episodes, and Annie Wershing played her last season on Picard. I know that there are a lot of questions as to how the Borg from last season figure into this season, and for those answers, I suggest you check out my podcast, WDIM News. 
As on this week's show, I went into a lot of these questions from the comments in my videos about this season. On the Titan, Seven and her crew devise a way to give Picard and company more time. Seven really seems to be taking to a leadership role quickly and even uses the same catchphrase as Picard. Engage. The Borg Queen tells Picard that the Borg were left poison, which is probably not referencing her last encounter with Picard. Instead, she is referring to the finale of the series Star Trek Voyager titled Endgame, in which a version of Catherine Janeway from an alternate future alongside the crew of the USS Voyager defeated the Borg by infecting them with a neurolithic pathogen, which is eerily similar to the morphogenic virus that Starfleet used to defeat the Changelings on Deep Space Nine during the Dominion War and eventually led them to working with the Borg to attack Starfleet this season. While this series is definitely a love letter to the next generation, it is nice that the writers on Picard were able to include aspects of Deep Space Nine and Voyager into the storyline. The Borg then become aware of Worf and Riker and attack them, which gives us a chance to see Worf beat down some zombie Borg. His first move is to go for the arm of the drone attacking him, a move he used before while fighting the Borg on the outside of the Enterprise E during the film First Contact. Assimilate this. Data convinces the crew that he can navigate through the Borg cube and find the source of the signal. Before he does so, he says, Here goes nothing. Which is almost definitely a direct reference to when this line was said by Lando Calrissian in the film Return of the Jedi. Here goes nothing. Honestly, this whole sequence with the Enterprise D inside the Borg cube has a very Return of the Jedi feel, so kudos to the creators of Star Trek Picard for owning up to it. The crew are then faced with a classic Star Trek situation in which they are forced to sacrifice the lives of others for the greater good. Logic clearly dictates that the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Or the one. Riker then delivers what is one of the best lines ever on Star Trek after deciding to stay behind and look for Picard and Jack. I owe a lifetime the least I can spare. It's a minute. <laughs> My emotions! My emotions! Picard also decides to sacrifice himself by plugging back into the Borg Collective. When he begins his assimilation, the scene is cut with many scenes taken from the film First Contact. While sharing the Borg consciousness with Jack, Picard mentions how he is waiting in a vineyard to die alone. This is referencing where we first found Picard when the series began, sitting at his vineyard and making wine. The Enterprise fires on the Borg signal generator, and Riker and Worf seem to concede their fate when Worf says the now infamous Klingon saying, It is a fine day indeed to die with honor. Which Michael Dorn as Worf has said many times over the years, but first in the Next Generation episode, Sins of the Father. It is a good day to die, Doris. And the day is not yet over. Oh no he didn't. <laughs> Picard is able to save Jack when Troy finally has something to do and helps them find everyone on the Borg cube who are then beamed to safety. This also has the effect of removing the control that the Borg had over the fleet and the ship stand down. The crew then reunite on the bridge of the Enterprise, which allows Worf to become that uncle of yours that randomly falls asleep at family gatherings. Riker lets us know through a voiceover that Starfleet has implemented a way to not only remove the Borg DNA code using the transporters, but also detect changelings, which was created by Dr. Crusher, who is now the head of Starfleet Medical and has been promoted to the rank of Admiral. 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 We then see the return of the real Tuvok, played by Tim Russ. This is the second episode this season that Tim Russ has returned to play Tuvok, although in the seventh episode this season titled Dominion, he was actually playing a changeling version of himself. He presents her with a log from Captain Shaw in the form of a hologram, which looks very similar to the hologram created by Tasha Yar before her death in the first season of The Next Generation. Tuvok mentions that the log sent by Captain Shaw was done before the ship set course for the Riton system. This was when the Titan initially engaged Vatic and the Shrike, which means that this review was sent before the events of Episode 2. Worf and Rafi also share a very touching moment when he initiates a hug with her, which is much different than how he acted earlier in the season when meeting his old crewmates. We then fast forward a year and see the Enterprise D where it should be, among some of the most famous ships in the Federation's history, at the Fleet Museum. The ship looks to be between the USS Enterprise A and the USS Stargazer, the first ship that Jean-Luc Picard was the captain of. As they shut down the Enterprise D, Jordy says, Take care of her, Jordy. Yes, sir. After all, she's always taking good care of us. This is very similar to a line said by Dr. McCoy to Data in the series premiere of The Next Generation, Encounter at Farpoint. You treat her like a lady. And she'll always bring it home. 
Jack has also joined Starfleet and is now an ensign being taken to his first assignment. The voice that greets them, Admiral Picard, Admiral Crusher, welcome to Space Dock. Is the same that did earlier this season when they approached the Titan, Admiral Picard, Captain Riker, welcome to the Titan. And is the voice of Terry Metalis, who is not only the showrunner of the season of Picard, but also wrote and directed the finale. It is then revealed that the USS Titan A is now the USS Enterprise G, having been renamed after the events of this season. This is not the first time that we have seen a ship renamed like this, as the USS Sao Paulo was renamed the USS Defiant after the first Defiant was destroyed towards the very end of the series Deep Space Nine. Before taking out the new Enterprise, Captain Seven must say something, which Jack calls, Writing the opening line to your legacy. This is referencing the possible series Star Trek Legacy, which showrunner Terry Metalis has pitched as a continuation for members of this cast. In fact, there is a petition online that you can sign, and if you want to know more about this idea, you should check out this video I did when he announced it. We then find the old crew back at 10 Forward Avenue, in this case the actual bar, and not the one we have seen recreated this season. You can tell this because LaForge refers to Guinan being there with them, the character played by Whoopi Goldberg on The Next Generation, and who also returned last season on Picard. Worf says that he has to leave because... I have a lecture on the Mugatu meditation in the morning. The Mugatu are large beasts that look like an ape crossed with a rhinoceros and were first shown in the original series episode, A Private Little War. Data then starts to tell a joke and is cut off. This is the same joke that he was trying to tell in the Next Generation episode, The Naked Now. There was a young lady from Venus whose body was shaped like a... Captain to security, come in! Picard can't help but quote Shakespeare one last time as he quotes Julius Caesar to his crewmates at 10 Forward. Shakespeare is often quoted on Star Trek and by Picard specifically, possibly due to Sir Patrick Stewart being a famous stage actor as well, as he has starred in at least 18 major stage productions based on the works of Shakespeare alone. Before they leave, Picard pulls out a deck of cards, and the group continue to play cards as the shot drifts away from them overhead, which is very similar to the last scene of The Next Generation in the episode titled All Good Things. The finale also provides a mid credit scene in which Q appears to Jack and tells him that his trial has just begun. This is referencing his father jean Luke's first and last encounters with Q in which Picard was told that he was on trial for the rights of humanity. If you are wondering how Q is here after he appeared to die last season, Jack asks Q the same question, which Q says, And here I was hoping the next generation wouldn't think so linearly. What this means is that this version of Q is younger than the one we saw last season, so this Q may not even be aware of what happened with Picard and did not grow as a character at all. In my opinion, this was added to perhaps lead into the first adventure for the crew on Star Trek Legacy if that series is ever made. Well that is all I saw, but let me know in the comments if I missed anything. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please remember to hit that like button if you have enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time on What Did I Miss?